What's the word, y'all? Very quick reactions to the Indiana Pacers beating the New York Knicks. We have a 2-2 series, y'all. Best of three for the rest of this. Now, two of those at Madison Square Garden, but still, it is a it is a best of three going forward. And I can't lie to you. I'm filming this video well before the game is over. I saw them uh, bring in Kendall Brown, no disrespect. Doug McDermott, no disrespect. And I was like, oh, yes, raps. Shout out to Tom Thibodeau. No, not shout out to Tom Thibodeau. We're going to talk about it. Uh, the Indiana Pacers laid the smackdown. Y'all know today is Mother's Day, and I got all the moms in my life here. I got my mom, my grandma, my wife, just trying to celebrate the women that gave us life, the, the women that make the, the, the that are the most important to us, right? But also, I got work to do. And they understand, they understand it. So instead of it being something else on TV, we got the Knicks versus Pacers game on. My mom, my grandma, everybody understands that this is my job. This is how we pay the bills. So I got to watch this game, right? First quarter ends, it's 34 to 14 or something like that. My mom look at me and say, you sure you got to watch this game? I guess I don't because it was over. Now, in 2024, a 20-point lead can, can be gone like this, but the Pacers kept the pressure on, and it was not a single moment in this game where the Knicks looked like a threat from the very early second. Like, you know how sometimes a team can win a game, right? And you can look back on it and be like, oh, this player struggled, but I guess it didn't matter because they ended up winning. Tyrese Halliburton, TJ McConnell, Miles Turner, OB Toppin, Pascal Siakam, Aaron E. Smith, uh, Andrew Nimhar, Ben Shepard, all eight of their real rotational pieces had phenomenal games. These men could not miss in the first quarter. Even got to the point where the Knicks were rattled, the, the Pacers score a basket, and then they turn the ball over on the inbound. Like they was playing 2K and they hit the A button too fast. Like this was an absolute smackdown. Indiana is a basketball state, so you felt all of the energy in the arena. And now they got to go back to Madison Square Garden, and they feel pretty comfortable. They feel pretty good about the way they've played over the last couple games. I mean, one of the biggest switches that we talk about schematically is to make it so that we saw Aaron Eastman guard and Jalen Brunson. Now, since that happened, Jalen Brunson has been kind of mute in the series. Could that be his injury? We're going to talk about it. Could that be Aaron Eastman? It's probably a combination of both because basically what Rick Carlisle and them are doing is very similar to what the – the uh, Philadelphia 76ers did in the first couple games of their series, they're going to send a big body at Jalen Brunson. Now, first couple games, first two games, they said, Andrew Nimhard, you got to guard this man in space. We not, we, we just got to let you do your part. We're going to make sure that we neutralize the others. That didn't work out because Jalen Brunson was dogging in that one-on-one -on -one matchup. So now they flipped the script. We're going to have our biggest bi biggest defender that we can have on him, Aaron Neesmith. And we're also going to send multiple bodies at him. And if Dante DiVincenzo dropped 35, guess what? We believe we could still win that game. And they did in game number three. So that has been a huge por portion of this. We talk about just the scheme aspect. Um, I love the fact that when Tyrese Halliburton and TJ McConnell have shared the floor together, it has been electric. Um, I saw the stat. Oh, I, I screenshot the stats during this game. Let, let you know, I'll be, I be doing a little bit of my work. Let me see. Uh, in the regular season, TJ McConnell and, and Tyrese Halliburton only played 220 minutes together. They had a net rating of 15.97, almost a 16 net rating where the offensive rating with TJ McConnell and, and, and Tyrese Halliburton on the court together was a 131. Hello? Now, in the playoffs... They've only played 66 minutes before this game. Uh, after the game, I guess I'll go back and see what the numbers look like. But these numbers are going to be better because a lot of that big run that they went on was when TJ McConnell came into the game. Where in the postseason, they have a net rating of uh, 8.56 together. So still really, really good. Really, really good. And part of that is TJ McConnell is just a dog defensively. Like, yeah, he's going to have his deficiencies just because he's small and everything. But he's going to compete. And I thought that... There were times in game number two where T.J. McConnell looked really good against Jalen Brunson. Again, Jalen Brunson is a star, so sometimes you can play great defense, and if you're too small, Jalen Brunson is going to shoot over you. Hell, he's shooting over people that are six inches taller than him for the most of his life. But still, those two guys sharing the court together has been magnificent. And now they go back to Madison Square Garden, and I bet in that locker room, they feel really good about this series. I don't know what the odds are going to say, but I would assume that things have shifted dr quite dramatically because the Knicks do not look the same. And the reason for that... Aziz, man, got so many injuries, man. Um, of course, Bogey by Donovan goes down with a freak accident after playing three seconds in the game. Julius Randle has been out since, what, January. OG Ananobi played the first two games, and he was phenomenal, 28, 29 points in game number two, and then he's been out. And Mitchell Robinson is out for the rest of the year as well. That is four real rotational pieces. Let's just say three, because Bogey was hit or miss in the playoffs so far. So Julius Randle, OG Ananobi, pass, uh, and, and Mitchell Robinson, the stats say, in the 30 games that they've played since trading for OG Ananobi that OG has not suited up for, they are 13 and 17, a sub 500 team. And you feel that, bro. You feel that because Pascal Siakam can just do what he want because that you like Preston Chuya. You know, he's, he's a solid player and everything. He ain't no G. 
OG is a threat offensively. And that cor the corner three-point shots, the above-the-break three-point shots, hell, even him putting the ball on the floor, they missed that dramatically. And now your star player, Jalen Brunson, is hobbling around all game long. Hell, he was injured in game number three. He said in his post-game interview, it don't matter if I'm out there to play. Don't even think about me being injured. But I, I respect that mindset. But, I mean, I was watching these games. He's hobbled. And in the first couple minutes of this game, he takes a three-point shot. And Aaron Neesmith is under him a little bit. Or maybe a lot. It's, I guess it's up for interpretation. And he hurts his other leg. So now we have our star player, Jalen Brunson, playing 30 minutes, which is way too many considering the circumstances of this game. Tom Thibodeau waited way too long to pull his starters, whatever. Specifically the ones that are injured. Jalen Brunson's now going through his injury. OG, Pimitri Robinson, Julius. R that is four of your five projected starters out or going through injury. Now, everybody's dealing with something, but damn, this is a lot. <laughs> it just is. And, I mean, I, I still feel, um, no disrespect to the Knicks or the Pacers, that, you know, no matter who wins this series, they're going to go against Boston, and Boston's probably going to take care of business. But this is like... Just a lot. And, and I posed this question to uh, Pierre, who's my cousin slash a Knicks fan on my other podcast, Numbers on the Board. You should go watch that, by the way. We're close to 100,000 subscribers. Um, and I asked him because we, we had been seeing these injuries, right? And I asked, what percentage of this is probably Tom Thibodeau playing these dudes 80 minutes a game? And what percentage of it is bad luck? And I honestly do believe it's a combination of both. As a guy that has watched Tom Thibodeau coach his team and seeing players like Luol Deng have moments where he just couldn't couldn't even move towards the last couple years of his career, as I see uh, and Derrick Rose not being subbed out with one minute left in a double-digit lead, and I see Joe Kim Noah go on after the Knicks and his body break down, there has to be something and it's as crazy as it was and how fun it was or is because it's not over <laughs> i'm making it sound like the series is over it is not over by any means it's it's cool until it's not it's cool to see josh hart or see the stat that josh hart ain't checked out in 10 quarters then you're like damn you think about it he ain't checked out in 10 quarters what come on man there's a reason while teams why teams front offices build teams to be eight to nine deep because it's just too much on the human body to say you're going to play 40 minutes a game in a seven-game series. And we're also going to try to do that until we win 16 games. How do, you, how do you win a championship that way? It's unlikely. Now, you can argue that the Knicks were not going to win a championship regardless. But still, this is a team that no matter what happens in the series, you feel very good about this year for the New York Knicks. 100%. Jalen Brunson turned into a superstar. The old John Anobi trade has been a success as long as we can keep him healthy. Like, there's a lot of things to feel very great about for a New York Knicks fan. But specifically right now, I'm sure they're not feeling great because or because all of the injuries and Jalen Brunson's not looking good. And they, you know what I'm saying? It's uh, it's something to think about. Is it Thibodeau? Is it something else? I mean, I'm looking at these stats. Josh Hart only played 23 minutes. He probably, he probably feels great. He'll be, he'll be well-rested for game number five. Um, Alec Burks was a bright spot in this one, I guess. I mean, at, at one point, I just stopped paying attention. I started paying attention to the family and everything. But I can't. I, and, oh, this is the last thing before we get out of here. I've been seeing way too many conversations on Twitter about the Pacers. What do you want them to do? They can only play the team in front of them. Should, should they not be happy that they win in just because Jalen Brunson is injured? Should they not be? Do you want them to win this game by 70 points and go into the locker room they head down? Well, we didn't, we didn't beat them when they were healthy. No. Your job is to beat the people that are in front of you. Win the basketball game. This is a Pacers team that ain't won a playoff series uh, for like a decade before last week. Let them win. Let them be excited about their wins regardless of who's injured and who's not. Y'all, we have we have gone so far away from the plot when you telling fans that they can't be excited or telling players that they can't be excited because they on the 20 to 4 run. Because were well, they best players injured? Cut it out. Because if the roles were reversed, if, the, if my Bulls were up on a series or tied in a series, it don't matter who they're going against. I'm excited. I'm ecstatic. That's what fandom is. I, I, I've never in my lifetime. Think about, think about all of the championships that have been won. Where the opposing team had a bunch of injuries. You can go down the every championship. Every one. You can you could somehow put an asterisk next to it. Imagine if fans were like, damn, there was no Kyrie Irving and no Kevin Love in this series. No. I'm taking my weight. What? Are you serious? You think Raptors fans is like, no, oh, I can't celebrate because KD and Klay Thompson went down. No. Our job is to beat the team in front of us. And the Pacers just did that. Twice. And these dudes, when they were down, they still kept the same energy. It's not like they just turned it on when they started to win. 
They've been very boisterous and very outgoing and talking to each other this whole series. That is what hoops is. And that's what it should be. I just, I, I've never understand that. I feel like things have shifted so far away from what fandom really is. Let us be excited because we're winning basketball games. Just like you were excited when you won basketball games. That's what we, I'm out of here. Let me know what you think about this series.